My name is Reid Yalasov, and I'm from the Material Science Department at the University of Michigan. The title of my talk is Achieving High Resolution of Large Specimens Using Aberration Corrected Tomography. This talk builds on our work in the paper The Limits of Resolution and Dose for Aberration Corrected Electron Tomography, which is available via archive. For decades, we've been effectively using tomography to measure samples in three dimensions. However, with the advent of aberration-corrected scanning transmission electron microscopy, some of the assumptions upon which tomography is built are no longer valid. Aberration-corrected tomography collects a through-focal series of images at each tilt in a tomography tilt series. On the left, we visualize in three dimensions the region of space from which aberration-corrected tomography collects information in frequency space. But until now, we did not know if we could measure the atomic coordinates for extended objects. On the right, we see a simulated aberration-corrected tomography reconstruction. This shows that there is no sampling limit for aberration-corrected tomography. This object was reconstructed at atomic resolution over 15 nanometers in three dimensions. In this talk, we will discuss, we will review the limits of aberration-corrected tomography, and we will discuss results from large-scale multi-slice simulations. Before we can discuss the new limits of tomography, we must first define the traditional limits. Crowther defined a fundamental trade-off of tomography. If you want to increase the object size of your reconstruction, you must either use more tilts or settle for lower resolution. Hegel and Hopp showed that the quality of a tomographic reconstruction does not depend on the distribution of dose throughout the sample. This means that you can either sample an object with high frequency and low dose per image, or with low frequency and high dose per image, and the resulting tomographic reconstructions will be the same as long as the total dose is equivalent. But these limits fail with aberration correction. Both Crowther and Hopp's arguments are dependent upon the projection slice theorem, which requires a perfect projection in real space. Traditional tomography uses small aperture semi-angles to, to collect perfect projection images. On the left, we see a slice through the electron wave function calculated with a 10 milliradian aperture semi-angle. We see that this probe is broad in the imaging direction, which gives us a perfect projection. If we take the Fourier transform of the probe, we can see the shape and intensity of the contrast transfer function. Here we see that the CTF is planar as expected. With aberration, correct with aberration correction, however, we use larger aperture semi-angles to improve resolution. In this 30 milliradian probe, we see that the probe is confined in the x and y directions, but now it's also confined in the z direction. If we look at the CTF, we see that we collect higher spatial frequencies, but the CTF now extends in the KZ direction. This will not give us a perfect projection. Only a small part of the object can be in focus at any one time. With the advanced microscopes being presented at this meeting, aperture semi-angles are reaching 60 milliradians and beyond. Here we see just how confined the probe is in the Z direction. This means it's imperative that we define the limits for aberration corrective tomography. It's also important to remember that a single projection will not collect the entire CTF. In order to collect the CTF, you must take a through focal series of images. This is what defines the aberration corrected tomography method. At each tilt, a through focal series of images is collected. We will start by discussing the relationship between resolution, object size, and sampling for aberration corrected tomography. Traditional tomography collects information on a series of tilted planes in frequency space. We can visualize this in three dimensions by tilting a disk about the kx axis of k-space. Now this image on the left is a slice through the kykz plane of the 3D CTF. With aberration corrected tomography, each plane is replaced with this propeller blade shape. Now we visualize in three dimensions the contrast transfer function for aberration corrected electron tomography. Here we've exaggerated the aperture semi-angle and the tilt step to 30 degrees so we can better see the features. The image on the bottom left is a slice through the KYKZ plane of the 3D CTF. The resolution of the reconstruction is defined by the distance between adjacent CTFs on this slice. Another interesting feature of this slice is that adjacent CTFs overlap, meaning that there's a volume of frequency space in which the structure of the object is completely measured. We will now look at an aberration corrected tomography CTF with more realistic parameters a tilt step of 2 degrees and an aperture semi-angle of 30 milliradians. To better understand the features, we will zoom in on this region of the CTF and look at two adjacent CTFs. Again, we see the region of complete information transfer. The extent of this region is bounded by a critical frequency labeled Kc, which can be expressed using only a small angle approximation in half of the tilt angle step. 
The critical frequency is the tilt angle step subtracted from twice the aperture semi-angle, all divided by the electron wavelength. This makes sense. If we increase the aperture semi-angle, we increase the takeoff angle of the CTF, and we increase the overlap of adjacent CTFs, which increases the critical frequency. This critical frequency is used to define the relationship between resolution and object size. Once again, traditional tomography is governed by a series of planes in frequency space and is governed by the linear Crowther criterion. With aberration correction, each plane is replaced with a volumetric CTF. So now we have two distinct regions, the overlap portion below the critical frequency and the non-overlap portion above the critical frequency. As a result, we're going to define our new limit piecewise. In the region below the critical frequency, the complete structure of the object is measured, meaning that the effective distance between adjacent planes is infinitesimal. This means that the maximum object size should be unbounded. Above the critical frequency, we can write down an expression for the distance between adjacent CTFs. This can be related to the maximum object size, similar to Crowther's derivation. This piecewise expression is the new relationship between resolution, object size, and sampling for aberration-corrected electron tomography, analogous to Crowther's criterion. So we've defined the new relationship between resolution, object size, and sampling. The disfractionation theorem, originally defined by Hegel and Hopp, has also been updated for aberration-corrected tomography. This states that you can choose the total dose of your construction by distributing dose among the tilt series and the defocus series. For more information on the dose fractionation theorem, you can see our paper titled The Limits of Resolution and Dose for Aberration Corrected Tomography, available on archive. It's important to remember that aberration corrected tomography is still governed by the same absolute dose requirements of traditional tomography. These state that 3D resolution scales inversely with the fourth root of dose. To validate the use of aberration corrected tomography, we turn to multiply simulations. Shown here are the XYZ coordinates of the object we use. It incorporates three crystalline iron platinum nanoparticles experimentally reconstructed by a collaborator and an amorphous tantalum nanoparticle with computed atomic coordinates. This object contains over 30,000 atomic coordinates spanning 15 nanometers in three dimensions. Even with the GPU-accelerated multi-slice algorithm available in the Prismatic package and the advanced GPUs at Oak Ridge National Lab, the size of our object makes the computation of a single image nearly intractable. We would have to propagate a 3,000 by 3,000 pixel wave function at each probe position. In order to solve this problem, we slice our object into smaller sub-areas and compute the image for each sub-area separately. This allows us to reduce the size of the computed wave function dramatically. Instead of the computing the wave function over the final area of the image, we compute the wave function over a third of the area. To do this, we slice the atomic coordinates into a third of the area, shown in the outer red box, and we propagate the computed probe over the center of the cropped coordinates, shown in the inner blue box. Then we take the 36 indiv individual images and stitch them together to create one final image. This process is up to nine times faster than the conventional multi algorithm with negligible error. On top of this, we compute four frozen phonon modes for each image. This simulates the effect of thermal perturbations in the microscope. In order to create aberration corrected tomography data, we collect an image at each of 17 defocus steps for each of 360 tilt values. This gives us a tilt step of half a degree and a defocus step of nine angstroms. In total, we calculate more than 6,000 images over 75,000 GPU hours. In this computation, we propagated nearly 3.5 billion electron wave functions. Here is the final atomic resolution aberration corrected electron tomography reconstruction. This shows that we can measure atomic coordinates over extended objects. There is no sampling limit for aberration corrected tomography. These reconstructions are highly accurate. This is a plot showing the accuracy of the identification of atomic coordinates as a function of the tomography tilt angle. This takes into account both false negatives and false positives. We see here that at low tilt angles, our reconstruction is nearly perfect. With tilt steps smaller than two degrees, we reconstruct more than 97% of the atomic coordinates. In this talk, we've discussed aberration corrected tomography, which collects a through focal series of images at each tilt in a tomography tilt series. This work builds on our paper titled The Limits of Resolution and Dose for Aberration Corrected Electron Tomography, which is available via archive. We then demonstrated aberration corrected tomography using large scale multi slice simulations. This atomic resolution reconstruction spanning 15 nanometers in three dimensions shows that there is no sampling limit for aberration corrected tomography. 
we can reconstruct objects of any size at atomic resolution. I would like to especially thank my advisor Robert Hufton and our collaborators at Berkeley and Argonne National Labs. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, please join the live, te live text Q&A session.